Hey friends, so I had a really nice, neutral, vaguely uplifting video planned for the day, but stuff just keeps on happening, and someone needs to say something, and I guess it's me. I am that someone. The Mexico City policy, or as it is sometimes referred to as the global gag rule, has recently been reintroduced by executive order. This policy was originally introduced by President Reagan in 1984. It prohibits granting American foreign aid to non-governmental organizations who act as health providers and who discuss abortion as a family planning option. Really, it cuts off all funding to overseas non-governmental organizations whose work is in any way associated with abortion. If the organization offers abortion counseling, advocates the right to seek abortion in other countries, or refers patients to organizations that does either of those things, then th that organization loses U.S. funding. This happens even if the organization uses other sources of funding for these services. This executive order is a restriction on how organizations use their private funds, how they use their non-governmental money. Now, the reintroduction of this policy is not a surprise by any stretch of the imagination. Since its original introduction in 1984, every Democratic president has rescinded the law, and every Republican president has reintroduced it. This is one of the most partisan policies that currently exists, and it has a big impact. The United States is the single largest donor to global health services. The U.S. spends $600 million per year on international assistance for family planning and reproductive health programs, which helps 27 million people access contraceptive services and supplies. Even when the policy isn't in place, no U.S. money is spent on funding abortion because of the Helms Amendment, which ensures that no organization will be able to use U.S. funding to perform abortion services. I think the Helms Amendment is enough to try and decrease global abortion. This is because the global gag rule has proven to be incredibly ineffective. Not only have international health advocates insisted that their efforts aren't comprehensive without abortion services, research has shown that abortion rates actually increased due to this policy because this policy leads to the closure of health clinics and the restriction of contraceptive supplies. This is an ineffective and bad policy. Not only does it lead to an increase in abortion, it also increases the maternal mortality rate. The Stanford University of Medicine conducted a study whose results were published by the World Health Organization, and they found that the last time this policy was in place, abortion rates increased globally by 40%. The World Health Organization estimates that over 21 million women a year have unsafe abortions in developing countries, and that accounts for 13% of all maternal deaths. And with this policy in place, Marie Stopes International has estimated that there will be an additional 2.2 million abortions globally each year, and that 2.1 million of those abortions will be unsafe. This is a bad policy. It leads to more unsafe abortions and puts millions of lives at risk. This policy means cuts to family planning programs, limited access to contraception, fewer cervical cancer screenings, prenatal checkups, and HIV support programs. This is a devastating policy that leads to thousands of people dying, and I will always be against ineffective and unsafe policy. It doesn't accomplish what it intends to do. Instead of restricting abortion, it leads to death. And I don't know why it's being reinstituted when we have all of these facts proving that it's ineffective. The reinstitution of this policy happened right after the Women's March, and some have suggested that reinstituting this policy is in retaliation to the Women's March. And I don't know if that's true, but I do know that in reality, attempts to stop abortion through restrictive laws or by withholding family planning aid can never eliminate abortion because those methods do not eliminate women's need for abortion. I would love to see more policies that work off of scientific data that can be proven to be effective and that can eliminate the need for abortion, because that's the only way that we are going to actually decrease the abortion rates. If you want to work with me to advocate for effective policy, you can click over here to subscribe. You can click over here to watch my last video and click right down here to support me on Patreon. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow.